number of big things that have been happening. Banks have been reporting earnings. We saw huge beats. But what does this mean for the sector and the economy overall? We're watching these rates on the move up and then down. Aaron Dessens with us, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management. Aaron, what are your thoughts? We look at the key takeaways. We've, we've heard from some of the banks so far, um, some of the trends that you are jumping out to you. Uh, well, thanks for having me. As you mentioned, you know, we've seen a lot of the big banks already report earnings and absolutely crushing estimates uh, by 30 percent at the least. Um, and we see this trend continue as the economy continues to reopen. Also talk about inflation. Um, you know, some of the, the negatives that were weighing on the numbers that banks were reporting were in consumer loans and net interest margins. But as we continue to see interest rates go up, which we think they will with inflation, and you know some of the stimulus money starts to be spent and people get back out there in the economy, we think that the consumer borrowing is also going to pick up, which we actually saw it pick up, I think, about 8% year over year in February. Um, so both of those bode really well for financials moving forward. So you think these are some, some catalysts to drive financial stocks higher. Are you a fan of investing in financials or at least having some financials in your portfolio? And then I'm going to dive into the earnings a little bit and some thoughts. But overall, are financials a good investment? Absolutely. I mean, we, you always want to have a hedge against inflation in the portfolio. Um, stocks are a great way to do that, and especially financials, right? You need income as an investor. Um, and you also need these cyclical areas of the market to really be able to take advantage of you know, economic economies like we're in right now that are really starting to reopen and reheat. Yeah. And we've talked about why financials could be a good investment um, overall. You just talked about it, obviously, being a hedge. But I was looking at some other things and some recommendations. I'm not saying that you have to make recommendations, but things that they were watching, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley with some growth potential, um, diversified recurring revenue, right? When you look at what, how do they get revenue, trading revenue, advising revenue, asset management revenue, these kinds of things that you can count on, the consistent dividends. Um, those things, are they important to you when you're trying to pick out which stocks to invest in? Uh, that's a great question. It is important. We don't specialize so much in individual stocks. We're more of asset allocators and buying an index. Um, but we certainly right. want to be owning things to your point, where it's not just like a small regional bank that's only counting on consumer lending and net interest margins, right? We also want to right. own businesses that have big trading platforms that are doing investment banking and involved in mergers and acquisitions because there is such a tremendous potential for revenue there as well. Yeah, and when you have these uh, strategy meetings and we talk about interest rates, which had been running up, right? 1.7, oh my goodness, and then they uh, fell back, right? Um, so what are your thoughts when you see interest rates falling today? Are you concerned if interest rates don't continue to rise when it comes to banks? Uh, no, because there are those other areas, as we discussed, you know, I think consumer lending is definitely or consumer borrowing is definitely going to pick up. Um, and, you know, as we just discussed, talking about the trading platforms and investment banking, et cetera, those are all good for those big financials as well. Uh, but just looking at it on a macro level, I mean, I think inflation is here and interest rates are, are almost destined to go up. If you think about, you know, input costs going up, commodities pricing is rising um, for these companies, disruption in supply chains. You know, how long is that going to take for the, these businesses to shift those raising prices down to consumers um, and really ultimately cause, cause inflation and rates to go up? Yeah. Tell me about your inflation outlook. Um, obviously, inflation... To a certain extent, how much, how worried are we, um, and how does it affect when you're doing strategy meetings, when you're trying to do some allocation? Well, it's definitely something that we always want to account for. Uh, for example, right now, we're, we're definitely positioning our client portfolios to make sure that they're able to combat inflation and have that hedge for it long term, because that's really one of your biggest concerns as an investor and somebody approaching retirement, right? If we say that inflation is at you know three percent on average since World War II, your expenses are almost going to double every twenty years. So how do we account for that? Um, and that's uh, that that's really the big one of the biggest areas that we look for from you know a planning and an investment perspective. Um, and really, with all the money that's been pumped in by the federal government, all the stimulus, the easy monetary policy, you know, it, it's it's really just a matter of time in our view before. Uh, inflation really starts to tick up. And hopefully, you know, the Fed will will react appropriately and sort of raise rates and, and keep it in line. 
Um, but I, I think that the days of you know near zero rates are are done at least for you know the next couple of years. Pain capital management. I mean, I you know we have you guys on a lot, and I know pretty much always looking for the opportunities. Pretty much bullish for the most part. Um, what is your outlook overall when you when you see the S and P five hundred at the end of this year, the end of next year, five years? Um, what's your longer term play here? Ultimately, we're we're very bullish, as you said. I mean, historically, markets rise um, over the long term. You know, at the end of this year, next year, five years, impossible to say. I think they will likely be higher than where they are now. Um, that's really just a result of uh, productivity increasing, and you know, these these global companies increasing their innovation, increasing their productivity, um, and really just getting that out to the the global consumer and meeting that demand. Yeah. What What do you guys think about some international? Investing, do you put that into the portfolios and your thoughts on China stocks in particular? Um, do you guys uh, obviously put some international? Maybe I'm asking you something off the cuff that you haven't been prepared to answer, but uh, maybe you can give me a broad based answer. Well, so we absolutely always want to have an international exposure. I mean, really, you know, age old adage with diversification all these asset classes, all these areas of the market are risky, but by owning all of these different classes, then we can thereby reduce our risk. Um, so we definitely like international markets, especially emerging markets, places like China. I mean, second largest economy in the world, China, India, these are some of the largest, fastest growing middle class populations in the world. So if we look at the U.S., you know, that's largely an aging population, whereas yeah. China and India is really a young, booming sector of the economy. What is that going to look like in the next 10 or 20 years? There's certainly a lot of growth potential right. there. Um, so we, we certainly are involved in all these markets and want to own everything so that we can, you know, hedge our bets and reduce our overall risk for ourselves. Yeah. And, clients. and Aaron, I'm sure you own some health care or something, because as you talked about our aging population here at home, I think that's absolutely true. We, that's uh, part of it as well. Aaron, it's great to chat with you. Thank you so much. Aaron Dessen, financial advisor, pain capital management. Always a pleasure.